Robert Leonard wrote this article for The Hill uh, called The Difference Between Republicans and Democrats. And he starts this article out by saying the difference between Republicans and Democrats is that Republicans believe that people are fundamentally bad, that human beings are innately bad. They're not good people and that they need to be instructed on how to be good. Now, he also says Democrats see people as fundamentally good. Now, he says, with that philosophical premise, former Oklahoma Representative J.C. Watts isolated the difference between members of the two political parties in the clearest manner I have ever heard. And the implications of his statement are considerable, as it explains many Republican policies for at least a generation. Now, he continues, Watts made the remarks in Pella, Iowa, while stumping for Senator Rand Paul before the Iowa caucuses. Now, Watts drew the nation's attention as the, as the quarterback who led the Oklahoma Sooners to consecutive Orange Bowl victories. And blah, 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 sports, right? I don't really care. But it really kind of gets uh, the background to Watts. Now, let me uh, go a little further in this article. Watts was answering a question regarding his position on the Second Amendment, where he stated that Republicans believe that people are fundamentally bad and Democrats believe the opposite, they are good. Quote, we are born backwards into this world. We are born bad. No one has to teach a child how to behave badly. They are born knowing how to do that. We teach them how to be good. Now, how do you be good, according to Watts? Well, we become good by being reborn. Born again. And see, that's where you get into Christianity. That's where you get into organized religion. And that's sort of the fundamental underpinning that this article, that this uh, this author really wants to kind of point out. Now, let me continue with that. Democrats believe that we are born good, that we create God, not that he created us. If we are our own God, as the Democrats say, then we need to look at something else to blame when things go wrong, not us. Now, he continued by referencing the theater shootings in Lafayette. Um... Republicans know that this was a bad man doing a bad thing. Democrats will look for other causes. That the man was basically good, but that it was the guns, society, or some other place where the blame lies, and then they will want to control the guns, or something else, not the man. We don't need to look anywhere else for the blame. It's the man. L look at the simplistic view. He's bad. Therefore, he does bad things. Now, he's right in saying the Democrats, liberals in general, we try to look at reasons why. We actually critically think. Well, I know it's crazy, right? But we think about, okay, what, what factors kind of added into this to make somebody snap? Were there economic factors involved? Was there a mental health issue? But Republicans, conservative Christians especially, believe that the person is broken. And therefore, since he's broken, he's going to do bad things. He's a bad person. Now, of course, what they say uh, to become a good person, they say you need to be with God. You are broken, you're a sinner, therefore, you need to go to God to fix you. Now, the implications of that, and he points this out quite clearly, the implications of this is that men being born bad seems an equivalence to the word sinner. As the Christian faith says, we are all born sinners and therefore bad. The implication saying no wonder welfare recipients are often portrayed by many Republicans as irresponsible, lazy, and exploiting the system. Continuing Watt's logic, while Democrats would see welfare recipients as good people who have fallen on hard times, Republicans see them as bad people, sinners, whose personal failings and lack of faith put them in the bad position. That blew my mind. I never thought of it like that. Now, on reflection, it kind of makes all the sense in the world. So... And it fits with what conservatives want to do. Oh, you're, you're, like, for example, 
let's take the horrific crime of rape. Now, when rape happens, a lot of Democrats, a lot of liberals, are like, oh, Jesus Christ, what happened? That, see, you know, she, he was a, she was attacked. And it's the rapist's fault for being a rapist. Now, some conservatives will look at that and go, what was she wearing? What was she doing to invite that? She was being a bad person, therefore something bad happened. Y you see that? Another thing. Going back to the welfare issue, well, you should have worked harder. You're not working hard enough. You're not being a good enough person. You haven't went to church enough, and therefore you're you're on hard times, and that's your fault. That's why we shouldn't have to help you. The article with this simple logic that all behavior not in the best interest of society is the product of bad actors with no influence by external or environmental factors, external social or environmental factors, sorry, this philosophy effectively calls for the end of all social sciences. Poverty doesn't influence crime rates. Inequality isn't an issue. Institutional and structural violence isn't something to take seriously. All for example, that is, if we become good, born again, as in born again Christian, everything will be fine. Research isn't needed. Facts aren't needed. All one needs is the right ideology to solve the world's problems. This is why I say that there is a segment of the American population that you just cannot talk to. Their fundamental beliefs are so different than that of other people that there are very few areas in which you can reconcile. If you start out thinking that everybody's a horrible person and they're going to take advantage of you at any chance that they have, that altruism is dead, that you should keep everything for yourself because you know everybody's out to get what's yours, well, you're not going to get along when it comes to politics. You're not going to get along with your fellow human beings. You're not going to want to help your fellow human beings. And that's really kind of what it comes down to is this fundamental disconnect between Americans, between people in general, between people who are conservative, between people who are liberal. Now, he ends out the article by saying, do all Republican candidates believe this, that people are inherently bad? I would say no. Now, he says, since all are declared Christians and the faith requires one to see all the sinners, maybe so. Now, as I said, I don't quite agree with that. I think that that, that itself is a little too simplistic. However, I do think that there are a lot of people, especially a lot of Republican politicians, that absolutely feel that way. That absolutely think that people are just inherently bad. And their bad misfortune, it's because they're bad. It's because they've earned their lot in life. And people who are wealthy, well, they've earned that wealth by being good people. Now, it's often shown that it's sort of the opposite. Once again, I'm not trying to broad brush on this. There are some very good people who are very wealthy. It, it has to do with hard work in some cases. It has to do with luck. And a lot of it, at, the, at this moment, a lot of it has to do with the genetic lottery, which has, absolutely has nothing to do with whether or not you're going to be a good person or not. But as he says, maybe so, and if not explicitly, perhaps implicitly or subconsciously, many Republican policies back to President Reagan certainly suggest so. And maybe Watt's generalization about the differences between Republicans and Democrats is spot on. And he ends, if so, our political future is grim.